American author and journalist Tom Rosenstiel once said, it is no longer enough to report the facts truthfully. It is now necessary to report the truth about the fact. The meaning of objectivity in journalism has changed over the years. In the past, journalists were expected to completely detach their own opinions and thoughts from their work. But now that standard has evolved in a way that accepts the inherent biases of reporters. But how much is too much? Today we bring in two viewpoints from our USC Annenberg community to discuss where we draw the line between objective reporting and activism. I'm your host, Sky Lee, and welcome to the Annenverse. Hello, everyone. Today on this episode, we've brought on Maya Janung. She is the Chief Program Officer of the Charlotta Bass Journalism and Justice Lab at Annenberg. Thank you, Maya, for being here today. Of course. Happy to be here. We also have Jen Byers here. She's a graduate student writing her thesis on objectivity and leading the activism desk at Annenberg as well. Thank you, Jen. Hey, nice to meet y'all. So for this episode, we're going to go based on the collective fact that there's no longer that unrealistic standard for journalists to completely remove their biases. So that being said, if journalists are not sometimes even expected to input their own informed opinions in their work to guide their audience into the right thinking, um, where do we draw the line between activism and journalism? Um, I think that line is a really foolish line to even have as a core component of uh, of journalism. It be- the origins of the scientific method are, are basically a collaboration between Descartes and the Christian church. And so this idea of objectivity that we should be removed from ourselves is so deeply embedded into the history of whiteness, into the history of Christian empire, that I feel like a lot of folks who kind of just inherently disagree with that tend to be lumped in as activists because they just are working from a different set of principles. If you look at who's who's, you know, written off as an activist, it's some of the greats, you know, um, they're written off as activists in their time. But then, you know, decades later, when the rest of society catches up to them, they're geniuses, they're progressives, they're, you know, movers and shakers in their field. And so I think that line needs to be totally scrapped. You know, there's a crucial component to activism, especially when it's wielded with um, with intention. Um, and I think journalism is a beautiful marriage of that. I think historically we've looked at the word objectivity and it's almost seemed like this sort of noble imperative that we're journalists, we're objective, we, we find balance. We give equal time to both sides. And I think in doing so, you often obscure the truth because the truth is almost always comes down on a side. It might not be the particular sides that you're showing, but the truth is not in itself balanced. Um, The sky is blue, the earth is round. And so if we, aiming for objectivity, try to find ways to create balance when it's not truly there, um, we find ourselves really obscuring what the whole point of journalism is, which is to inform the public. So I think that this new definition of objectivity I think it's I think that's it's progress that we're sort of redefining objectivity and the ways in which that we infuse it within our journalism. I think at the same time, you want to infuse your activism in your work. But at the same time, you protecting yourself as a journalist, protecting your institution and also protecting the survivors by making sure that you are following the steps that it takes to have an ironclad piece when you're coming out with that. So I think we want to be. Uh, we we want to lead with our activism, but we also need to bolster it with journalism. I think you bring up a very good point. Um, I'm Rebecca Schneid. She's a co-editor of the Douglas High School's newspaper in Parkland, Florida. And she said that there's a distinction for me as a journalist and also someone who wants to demand change. But I think the partnership of the two is the only reason that we are able to make change. And I was wondering what you guys thought about that. I agree. I think that there are activists. I think they're journalists. And I think that there are activist journalists. You know, I don't think that you have to stay within like these rigid lanes. Um, I think every person is sort of imbued with their own skill set and their strengths. Um, And I but I do think that activism is supported by journalism, because you need people who can go in and do research and find data to support um, the laws that we want to change or the 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 practices that we want to change or the minds even that we want to change. You need data um, to to bring people over to your side or to even just uncover the injustices that you're trying to highlight. So I think 
that there's a marriage between it. Um, and I think journalism itself is a craft um, and it's something that you study and that you practice. And so um, I think they're two very distinct skills. They can be combined within one person, um, but I don't think they have to. Um, a lot of what gets called activism is people wanting basic rights and basic freedoms, like live in the body that they want to live in. And so I think one thing that's really interesting um, about this kind of union is looking at the social context that we're in, right? Where is it activism to say, hey, don't kill me? Is it is it activism to say, hey, don't take my children away from me? Is it activism to say I need water to be alive? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of these these things that what gets pegged as activism is kind of preposterous. <laughs> like, I think when it comes to these moments of like extreme injustice and basic freedoms being on the line, like the old model does not suit. Yeah. So to that point, who do you think should peg what is activism and what's not? Journalists are people. Journalists are, in many cases, voters. Journalists are not coming to the work that they do in a vacuum. They have their own experiences and belief systems. And so while I don't think it should be required or necessary for a journalist to sort of espouse their political leanings, um, I do think that um, for the people consuming that reporting or consuming those pieces, it is helpful to think of journalists as people who are coming to this with their own um, particular belief systems. Many times people aren't even looking at the byline. They're not even clicking on that link to see what, other, what else has this journalist written or what's their beat. Um, so I think there needs to be a way that we're just more open and transparent about the people behind the pieces mm -hmm. that we're writing. And so that the, the, the people who are consuming it um, just have more of a, a humanized view of mm -hmm. what journalists are and the work that they do. How do we encourage a culture in which we have more people being more um, aware of the news that they're consuming. So I think one thing that we could do is like ask the newsrooms to allow journalists to have freedom of personal expression so that a reporter's views are accessible. So I think that that's like one thing. It's like loosening the the grip on what we are allowed to do as reporters um, because that gives the public more information as well. Journalists in general are put in this very strange bind where we are asked to understand so much information and then we are like forbidden from having an opinion about it. I mean, in so many traditional societies, the people that have the information are doing advising, are doing counseling. Mm. I was wondering what you guys thought about this situation. Um, so basically after the overturn of Roe v. Wade, Axios chief executive Jim Vandehei urged his employees to stay out of the debate regarding abortion, while others such as Rolling Stone's top editor told his employees that they don't have to stifle their beliefs around here. And I was wondering what you guys thought about that. And as a newsroom manager, what would you do in this situation? You know, we're, we live in a capitalist society and um, these news rooms are often parts of major conglomerates um, that have like a, a financial imperative that's being sort of um, an edict that's coming down from the very, very top. And so it's it's very unfortunate that that is the uh, the market that we live in, where our, our media and the way that in which it's presented to us is very much a product of the capitalist society that we live in. Anything that's on television, anything that's ad based is going to be um, in, in many instances at the at, um, in view of the stakeholders, mm -hmm. the people who are paying for the operation to stay. And I, I assume that that's where that decision was coming from. We don't want to alienate our advertisers. But I think if you are part of an organization that has a mandate like that, where you have to maintain a neutrality on these super polarized and controversial topics, I think being transparent about why those reasons are, not only with your staff, but also with your audience and your consumers is really important. And so how can newsroom managers go about being transparent with their audience? Uh, the leadership should make a statement. You know, I think we saw at, you know, in the summer of 2020, we saw a lot of organizations, CEOs making statements around George Floyd and how they were going to change their practices moving forward. Or, and that would call for CEOs to make a statement about that and say, our organization is taking the stance because of X, Y, Z and allow that transparency. So when people are now consuming your product, they understand what, what you stand for and they understand why you're making the choices you're making. I think financial transparency is also really important. You know, um, who's funding, you know, ma making just 
financial transparency accessible to people and understandable to people like tracking money who who is paying for this whose campaigns are they donating to um what beliefs and ideals do they have um and then in, in terms of the how like i know i know there's like a group called open secrets that does that for politicians and it's like basically a whole website and kind of publication that does that for politicians i think if we had more of that in the media that would be great too if we actually break these media entities down they're run by people and people are not robots you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and even robots have a set of bias because because robots are made by people right. mm-hmm. you know like like we are fundamentally chasing an ideal that does not exist and that is causing harm i think that's perfect i feel like this conversation i feel like we just solved all of the problems of journalism <laughs> i don't know I'm if we kidding. solved them but i think we definitely like uncovered them yeah. oh for sure and that's the thing too it's like and so i think just recognizing the power of media, um, not just news, but entertainment, books, everything, um, and, and that it does have an impact. And it's not just like frivolous. Um, I think that's really important, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to pivot this conversation a bit just so that we can wrap things up. But in an ideal world, how can we harness the multi-ethnic identities of journalists and use it to their fullest potential in journalism? And Maya, maybe you can explain a little bit about how the Charlotta Bass Lab is doing that. As Black people, we have had a very specific um, and, um, yeah, we've had a very specific experience of America. And that's going to be different than someone who's not Black, their experience of America. And I think starting there and recognizing that, um, that that voice is coming from a very specific experience is really important. Um, And I think that's what we recognize as the Bass Lab, that it's important to um, own your identity in the work that you do. And it's important to, um, in the ways in which you f- you can be safe, because in some instances, it's not safe to do that, to be completely open and out about your identity. But I think um, if we want to pursue a future where it is safe for everyone to own their identities, we have to be a little bit brave and a little bit bold. And I think that's where we come back to activism. So Jen, how are you making changes in objectivity through the desk that you're working at? One of the things that I would really like to do is kind of... Um, validate fact check personal narratives just as much as um as report outsiders reports i think someone living in the milieu of uh of a situation of an issue is going to have um a more robust experience of it than someone who is parachuted in you know and if we see who gets handed the mic it's often people who've been in a community for three days and not people who've lived in a community for 30 years a lot of what i try to do with my reporters is kind of uh with their sourcing you know make sure okay how you know, how close can we get to this issue? You know, we really just kind of start from the ground up with our sourcing. Because again, like we have, I I personally believe that people who have the lived experience of a topic or an issue know more about the story than people who are parachuting in, people who are walking Mm -hmm. in. Um, And so we really just want to make sure that the community and the interviewees and the sources um, really, you know, consent to the information about them being out there and um, agree that the information is accurate. Um, How to do that is a completely other podcast, a completely other conversation. But from the top, I would say it begins really with just supporting the people who are already impacted. I think that was a great note to end on. While there are still um, many problems that we can fix within the journalism industry, I think we're all making steps in the right direction. And I think this conversation itself um, just shows the progress that we're making. Um, so thank you guys so much for your guys' time and being here today. Thank you. Thank you.